Hello everyone, this is Dr. Heath Robinson, and what I wanted to do here was just take a moment to show you some of the things that we've been talking about with scale and projections, and especially the interrelationship between scale and projections, by taking a look at this hard copy map. And I hope that you can see this well enough. I've been uh, having a little bit of a hard time getting everything set up to work because this is a laminated map, and so uh, different, uh, different glare coming off the light and so forth. So I hope you can see it well. But this is a map that I always bring into class whenever I give a physical lecture uh, to demonstrate some things about, uh, especially regarding the relationship between scale and projections. And so I wanted to make sure that I uh, gave you uh, the opportunity to uh, see the exact same things in a virtual way through this video. So what I've got here is a map that was produced by National Geographic. Uh, it's just one of their poster maps. And the first thing that you'll notice about it is that it is a compromise projection. This map does tell us what projection it is in, and it is in the Winkle Triple Projection. And that's a compromise projection. For a long time, National Geographic used the Robinson Projection, which is also a compromise projection. Uh, as its sort of general purpose reference map, uh, but it's replaced the Robinson projection with the Winkle Triple. So this main map here that you're seeing, this is the Winkle Triple world projection, and it is a compromise projection. Now remember what it means to be a compromise projection. When we talked about the different kinds of things that we can preserve, what information we can preserve, with uh, our projections, a compromised projection preserves no information. So when we're talking about shape of what we're seeing here on the map, when we're talking about area, when we're talking about direction, when we're talking about distance, all of that is little, a little wrong. So all of those are a little wrong. We're not seeing a, an accurate representation of the planet. We're seeing something that's a little bit wrong in every regard, but it is a compromised projection, so it is good enough on balance that uh, National Geographic anyway believes that it can uh, is a good enough for a general purpose reference map. So let's take a look at a, a couple of things about this. It does say Winkle Triple Central Meridian at zero degrees. And we haven't talked about Central Meridian yet, but let me go ahead and give you uh, what Central Meridian means. When you're setting up a projection, you not only get to choose what your lines of tangency are, and remember your lines of tangency are your lines of true scale, where information can be perfectly transferred from the reference globe to the uh, developable surface, but you also get to choose the central meridian, which is the central line of longitude, the central meridian that your projection will be centered on. And so this projection happens to be centered on zero degrees longitude, which is the prime meridian. And so you see it right in the very center of this map. So we are centered on zero degrees longitude. You can change that up, particularly in GIS software packages. If you want to shift uh, around what particular line of longitude your map is centered on, your projection is centered on, you can do that. But we do have a uh, projection right here. This Winkle Triple projection is centered on, this particular one is centered on zero degrees longitude. Okay, so what else can we take a look at? You know, this, this map communicates the scale to us. You know, National Geographic is careful to communicate the scale, and it does communicate the scale to us in three different ways. So we talked about three different ways to communicate scale, and as it happens, this particular map uh, communicates the scale to us in all three possible ways. It gives us a representative fraction, it also gives us a verbal scale, and it gives us scale bars. And you can see all of that information right over here in the corner. But let's talk about uh, the scale as far as a representative fraction goes. It tells us that the scale of this map is 1 to 36,384,000. So that's the scale of this poster. It's a little bit larger than what you're probably seeing here, but I got it sitting here on the table. Uh, so the scale at which this map is made is 1 to 36,384,000. That means that one of any unit represents 36,384,000 of the same unit on the actual Earth. Okay, so I got a, a ruler here. I'm going to lay it out right here. So that does mean that one inch on this ruler, one inch on this map, according to this ruler, must represent 
36,384,000 ,000 inches. I do like to say the word represent and not equals. Sometimes you'll see uh, people say, okay, one inch equals 36,384,000 uh, 36, inches. But that's not technically correct because of what, of course, one inch mathematically cannot equal 36 million. Uh, 384,000 inches. That's not right. Saying equals there isn't technically correct. What is correct and what's getting at the relationship that we're trying to express here is that one inch represents a certain number of inches. But remember, of course, that as a representative fraction, it is unitless. So it is true, while true, that one inch represents 36,384,000 inches. If I wanted to measure in centimeters, I certainly could. And I could say that one centimeter is also going to represent 36,384,000 centimeters. That's absolutely true because it's a unitless unit of measurement or a unitless ratio. Uh, as long as I take um, the same unit and I put it on both sides, then I've got uh, a true statement. So that's absolutely true. I got a marker right here. When we do say any unit, we do mean any unit. If I put this marker here on this map, then it is true that one of this marker's length, however long this particular Sharpie marker happens to be, if I were to set it down here, one Sharpie marker would represent 